This is the Earth Science Channel. Welcome back. This video is all on barrier islands, uh, its features, and geomorphology. So this video is going to directly follow along from part one, which was all about the formation, the definition, where you'd find barrier islands around the world, and the different theories that are used to explain the formation, the three theories. So this video is all about what you would find on a barrier island. And top left, and most of these pictures are of um, the Outer Banks, uh, beautiful uh, barrier islands off the North Carolina coastline, Atlantic Ocean. And um, you have various geomorphology features and processes at work to form these barrier islands and uh, create these features um, in the ocean. So this video is going to concentrate on, obviously, the features, uh, both of the wave action and the sediment deposition, and also the tidal features that go along with it. Okay, so let's just define again, just quickly review what a barrier island is. So this right here and this over here would be our barrier island. All right, and over here as well. So this is an elongated narrow strip of um, unconsolidated material that has been deposited by a combination of sea level, time, wave action, wind, um, and has created a basically a sand barrier that has risen above the ocean surface level and become a barrier and separated um, a piece of water, an area of water that is now between the barrier island and the coastal area, the inland area. So this area right here, which is a certain width and a certain depth, generally shallow, and this could be uh, anything from a creek to a sound to a bay, or even part of an estuary, if there is a river system that's going to feed into it, which we also have right here. Let's put in a river. So this is a very generic barrier island uh, diagram or schematic. It's obviously very detailed um, coloring and design. Just very simple um, to show the different features. Now, in terms of directions, basically, uh, this arrow down here on the bottom left, this is going to basically point in towards uh, the ocean or seaward. Okay, and then the arrow on the top left would be obviously the opposite, so it's going towards the coast, the inland areas there. So this area right here, we can just put as the ocean. So in terms of formation, we can also add the processes in. So we can also have um, some arrows that are indicating some direction of swell, the propagation of wave uh, energy, hydro uh, hydraulic action. And you can also have it uh, either perpendicular to the coastline, or you can have it at a slight angle, depends on the direction of the wind which would also create uh, longshore currents across that little cell or nearshore uh, circulation cell, and also develop things like spits. So you'd have wave energy right here. You'd have swell and also wind direction. Now this could change based on the season, based on location, latitude, where these barrier islands are. It could be a uh, consistent one direction of wind and, and waves and therefore the uh, consistent processes that act upon the barrier islands or it could be changing in a mixture of wind directions based on the seasons now in terms of other wave action we could discuss tides so tides based on the cyclic nature and patterns of the tides based on again location latitude uh could be semi diurnal or diurnal you know, one or two high or low tides per day um could be a range now generally these barrier islands are 
linked to wave dominated beaches, not so much tidal ranges. So the small tidal range um, and mostly wave action would produce these barrier islands. But the tides are still there. It could be a matter of a small feat, but they're still acting. So you'd have this well, first, this obvious gap. So this gap right here between these two barrier islands, and this is called an inlet. And these would change in number, a quantity based on the type of barrier islands you get, whether it's wave generated or a mixture, and also the shape of the barrier islands. But you get these inlets where it, the inlets allow as a space or a channel, basically it's a channel, that allows the tidal motion of the water to float in and out. So from the ocean into this creek or bay or sound area of the of the coastline the water and then flow back out to the ocean again either six or 12 hour cycles now the speed and velocity of the the, the 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 channel can change based on the depth and the width and if it's going to go into the creek or bay then it's generally very shallow and it's shallow it's going to lose energy when it loses energy, it's going to deposit anything that's carrying, the current's going to carry. So the sediment, the, the uh, suspended load or bed load is going to basically be deposited. Now, these darker areas, I've colored there darker blue, they represent the tidal deltas, right? The, like a river delta, where the tide is going to dump any um, accumulated material right on the entrances or the exits of this inlet so this one is called the ebb delta okay or tidal delta and the one in the uh, estuary sound cray beak area a uh, creek area that's closest to the coastline this is called the flood tidal delta now i've done a separate video on tides and explains these flood and ebb uh, currents um the flow of, of the tide in the flow tide out so you can also check that out if you want but it's going basically either side of this nice inlet now the tidal flats could turn into salt marshes you can get uh, a tidal marsh or salt marsh on the uh coastal side of the barrier island here it could also be uh, some raised ridges or some dunes, sand dunes that are going to be accumulated through wind and wave action. You can also have what's called a wash over fan. I'll make sure it's easy to see right here, this area right here, where during large storms or maybe tropical cyclones or hurricanes or typhoons, you may get a lot of the material being pushed over into the uh, estuary creek or bay on the uh, the coastal side of the barrier island and creating a tidal flat as well in this estuary you know deltas with the tidal currents you also have a system that's going to produce basically around uh 90 percent of the sediment that is used to transport and move along the long parallel with the beach and could also be uh used in formation of the barrier islands so most of the sediment is coming from that river system. Okay, so we can also have this fanned out delta, okay, around the edge of the point where the river actually joins in with the creek, bay, sound, or estuary. Now the combination of the salt water mixed with the fresh water, you're gonna get some brackish water, there and this also would be very um, productive for ecosystems for uh, habitats of animals and, and, and fish species and obviously humans uh, utilize that for fishing industry and obviously uh, living off the ocean another term for this area here could also be a lagoon uh, the how you basically name these bits of water are based on the amount, the size. So a larger area would be a sound. Lagoon would be kind of more uh, tropical uh, lo location, latitude. Uh, creek and bay would be kind of like the medium size. 
uh, areas and sound. Yeah, obviously it's the largest one, estuary, if it's just going to be with a river, river system or river delta. So in regards to actual barrier island, uh, you might have uh, various uh, sand shoals around the edges. All right, so around here, some sand shoals. Sand, a shoal is a uh, submerged accumulation of uncrossed material, mostly sand, like a sandbar will be that, but also can move and fluctuate with tidal currents and the wave currents, um, and also be transported and grow in size if need be. But any um, Obviously, from wave action, you've got the accumulation of sand onto the beach, creating dunes and raised ridges and high elevations. And you can have both of the four dunes at the front of the, uh, right here, the four dunes. Okay, you might have a crest or a berm over the actual beach, the actual shoreline. And might also have some back dunes as well, which could be uh, high elevation based on the consistent wind direction and wave direction pushing the sand up higher and that could also cause it to wash over and flow over into the um, creek or bay or lagoon which would cause a wash of a fan. So based on the salt marsh and the various uh, marshes that can be created in this uh, area of water between the barrier island and the coast you might get be very shallow uh, very conducive for animal habitats, as I mentioned before, but also the vegetation is very unique. It, they, these plants and trees, uh, these mangrove trees uh, or salt marshes and these, these plants are very uh, adaptable and can survive in this brackish uh, water, saltier than fresh, but maybe less concentration than regular ocean water. But it's a beautiful environment, again, um, can be very conducive for a fantastic ecosystem. So there you have it, an emerged, basically raised parallel to the beach sand dune that creates an environment above the water, a barrier that breaks up storms, allows tides to flow in and out, creating a beautiful environment behind it, which is an estuary or creek. And they occur over 15% of the coastlines in the world and over very passive uh, coastlines with a gentle slope in. Uh, gradient and with a lot of sediment to produce these large uh, accumulations of sand above the water. So they're not just a pile of sand. They are an amazing uh, geomorphological coastline landform. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helped and uh, look forward to seeing you in a different video.